Good evening, my brothers and sisters. I have found an interesting article here. It is from The Independent, and it's titled, Why Are Thousands of People Clamoring to See the Body of a Missouri Nun Who Died Four Years Ago? This is a recent article. So before we begin, as always, subscribe to my channel if you are new, and let us have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this evening that you have given unto us. Bless us. Pray your Holy Spirit upon us. Lord, forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Create a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Lord, we ask that you bless those who are watching this video right now. And Lord, we ask you all this in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So let us begin. The Benedictines of Mary, Queen of Apostles, had just finished digging up a body when they made a startling discovery. Though removing a body from its final resting place is typically seen as taboo, even among the secular, the sisters of the Queen of Apostles had holy intentions. They wanted to move the remains of their founder's sister, Wilhelmina Lancaster, who died in 2019, into their new monastery in Gower, Missouri. When they opened the sister's casket, they found something extraordinary. Lancaster showed few, if any, signs of decomposition. She had not been embalmed and was buried in a simple wooden casket. While perhaps strange in any other context to the Catholic faithful, consider such a discovery is no less than an act of God. The church even has a term for it, incorruptible. Interesting. Though the nuns initially had no intention of publicizing the discovery, a leaked email shared news of the discovery with the public, prompting the church to use the Memorial Day weekend to offer the public a chance to view their incorruptible founder before she is permanently entered in a glass case at the monastery. The nuns opened the doors to the faithful. And they came in droves. Over the weekend, lines stretched outside Mary Queen of Apostles Monastery in the rural Missouri town with Catholics from across the region driving in to see the miracle with their own eyes. Remember the word miracle because we're going to come back to that. The turnout was so significant that local police had to establish a command post at the site video from the monastery showed men in orange vests dis directing traffic to ensure the sheer number of cars arriving did not cause chaos at the church. More than 1,000 people arrived each day. The nun's body was available for viewing, prompting the church to advise visitors to bring umbrellas and folding chairs to weather the weight. Lori Ro Rosebra of Overland Park, Kansas, drove across state lines to visit what she believes is the hand of God at work on a potential saint. Not many people can say that they touched and prayed over the body of a saint, she told USA Today. I believe that thousands of us that made the trip to Gower, Missouri this week can now say that we have. Those who visited the site were allowed to view and pray over the nun's body to touch her habits and even to take dirt from her original grave. While the faithful flock to see the sisters remains, the diocese of Kansas City, St. Joseph is preparing to investigate exactly what is going on with the exhumed corpse. The diocese said it is working to establish a thorough process for understanding the nature of the condition of Sister Wilhelmina's remains, noting that they have understandably generated widespread interest and raised important questions. At the same time, it is important to protect the integrity of the moral remains of Sister Wilhelmina's to allow for a thorough investigation, the diocese said in a statement. The diocese bishop, James Johnston, noted that incorruptibility has been verified in the past, but it is very rare. Verification is a system within the Catholic Church of determining whether or not a miracle has occur occurred 
It is often done so in connection with the process of determining whether a dead Catholic is eligible for sainthood. Mary Elizabeth Lancaster, who later became Wilhelmina after taking her vow, showed her intent to become a nun at age 13. Despite her youth, she wrote to the Oblate Sisters of Providence in Baltimore, stating her intentions to join the order. They advised her to wait until she was a little older to take her vows. Nonetheless, she eventually joined the sisterhood and, at age 70, founded the Queen Mary of the Apostles' Order. The group has gained some notoriety, notoriety thanks to the albums it has released of Gregorian chants and Catholic hymns. Some visitors, like Miss Rosebra, have questioned if the discovery will make the nun eligible for sainthood. However, that is a question for 2024, as dead Catholics cannot be considered for sainthood until five years after the death, their deaths. Despite the fervor to see the potential saint, there are those who see the discovery as more mundane. Rebecca George, an anthropology instructor at Western Carolina University in North Carolina, told ABC7 that the discovery is not as unique as some might believe. She said that mummification of non-embalmed bodies was relatively common at the university's facility and noted that bodies could remain pre preserved for many years. She said that clothing, like the sisters' habit, also helped to preserve bodies after burial. Typically, when we bury people, we don't exhumate them. We don't get to look at them a couple years out, Miss George told ABC7. With 100 years... There might be nothing left, but when you've got just a few years out, this is not unexpected. Brothers and sisters, we are talking miracles here. We are talking sainthood, and all this is here to say that it's complete spiritualism. This is nothing but spiritualism, my brothers and sisters. And notice how they are trying to make her into a saint. They have to wait five years. They say her body hasn't decayed in four years of her after her death. And they call it incorruptible? Really? See, my dear beloved, they are trying to twist some scriptures. And put it on her. Start out with the book of Acts chapter 13. We will look at 35 through 37. The word of God says, Wherefore he saith also in another psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. But he whom God raised again saw no corruption. Listen, brothers and sisters, who are we talking about in these verses? We are talking about Jesus Christ himself, who God raised from the dead, right? And he saw no corruption. So they are trying to twist this scripture, place it on this dead woman that has been dead for four years. And... Because she did not decay, they're trying to say that she is without corruption, therefore she is holy, and we should make her a saint, right? But this is talking about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only one who has never seen corruption. That is, until Jesus comes in the cloud of glory and raises his faithful people to see incorruption. But until then, Jesus Christ is the only one who is incorrupt. This woman is just as corrupt as the next man who is living today. Just as corrupt as me, just as corrupt as you, just as corrupt as everybody that's ever lived on this planet. Am I correct? So we see this is nothing but spiritualism, right? And let's go back to these miracles that we see. They call this a miracle of God. Let's be honest. 
God is not the only one that can work miracles. Right? Satan can do that as well. In fact, let's go to the book of 2 Thessalonians in chapter 2, and we will look at verses 9 through 12. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 through 12 says, Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. What are we talking about? We're talking about miracles, the lying wonders. And these things are going to happen more frequently before Jesus comes back, right? It's all spiritualism. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. These people, they are being deceived by these miracles, right? And because of that, they reject the truth and believe in all these lies. Therefore, they reject their own salvation. They perish. Because of these deceptions. Because they refused to receive the love of the truth. That they might be saved. Instead. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion. That they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believed not the truth. But had pleasure in unrighteousness. So we see all these miracles begun, begin to take place just before Jesus comes. Listen, all everything you look at nowadays is all about miracles and magic and all kinds of things. Every you turn on your television screen, all you see are is magic. Black magic, white magic, any kind of magic you could think of. Harry Potter is pretty popular. Listen, Disney is pretty popular. It's nothing but spiritualism, beloved, just as this dead nun is. These people praying over a dead woman. Brothers and sisters, it's unbiblical. She's dead. She knows not anything. But God knows, right? These miracles that we are seeing, it's not from God. It's from the devil himself to deceive the masses. Listen, let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We will look at verses 13 through 15. Let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians. Excuse me, I mean 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 through 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Listen, beloved, Satan himself shall trans be transformed into an angel of light. And he is going to work all these miracles to deceive the world. And these deceptions are going to be are going to get so bad unless you are stayed into the word of God and know the truth, you will be deceived because there is coming a time where Satan himself is going to impersonate Jesus Christ and the world is going to be deceived. The world is going to bow down to the dragon. Without even knowing it. Just before probation closes. Just at the end of time. The world is going to be deceived. The world is going to worship and wonder after the beast and the dragon. We are at the finish line beloved. Clock is ticking. And Satan is still deceiving. Are you going to stay in the word of God? Trust in the word of God? Listen, go to the book of Matthew in chapter 24. We will look at verses 24 through 26. And this is Jesus speaking here. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch 
that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before, wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the sacred ch secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And I added verse 27 to that, because it has very significance to what we are studying right here. So at the end of time, the devil is going to impersonate Christ. The people are going to be like, look, Christ is over there. No, he's over there in the desert. No, he's in the secret chamber. Go out to see him. But the reality is, when Christ returns, he shall come as the lightning come from the east, even unto the west. When that lightning strikes, brothers and sisters, you are going to see it no matter where you're at. From the east to the west. You don't have to travel to see the lightning. It's everywhere, right? Listen, the whole world is going to see Christ return. There won't be news stations. There won't be television shows giving Jesus interviews. That's not going to happen, brothers and sisters. The whole world is going to see, to see this miracle that Jesus is coming in the clouds of glory. And he is going to bring his people back with him. And sin will be totally eradicated from planet Earth. Spiritualism will be no more. Satan will be no more. But that happens after the thousand years. So anyway, stay in the word of God, brothers and sisters, and be not deceived by these miracles that Satan is trying to play with on this earth. He's had 6,000 years of practice on earth. Jesus is coming back. So as always, this is John Tinsley with Everlasting Rock Ministries. And always remember, the truth never fails. God bless you.